Hey everyone, this is Veronica. Thank you for joining me on Veronica Says for a review of Scents by the House of Rogue Perfumery, an independent house, and the perfumer is Manuel Cross, a former chef turned perfumer. Let me say before I get into these reviews that I received a sample pack of 10 fragrances, I would say three weeks or so ago. I tried to do a video upon receiving them with my son and we ran into this issue where every single one of these scents was not appealing. And I thought something's got to be wrong with that. That just doesn't feel right to me that every single fragrance would lack any kind of appeal. Um, maybe they need to sit for a while. I hear from different people that sometimes when you get samples, you know, they're mixed fresh or something like that. I don't really know how that works on the perfumer side and that you need to let them sort of macerate for a few weeks. So I figured let's come back and let's try this again in a couple of weeks. I uh, have, have, have read about the perfumer and know that he has put in years of work mixing and blending and trying out different combinations of notes to get to what he believes and what a lot of people are believe, believe are scents that are throwbacks to the days before all of the more recent regulations came in and you know everything's been reformulated and the fragrance community is up in arms because the the notes are not the same the ingredients that are in the the perfumes um, to blend them are not the same they're not as strong and all of that, if you read any reviews on Fragrantica of old school fragrances, you will often see reviews of people lamenting that the vintage formula is no longer and their beauty from the past, you know, from the 70s, 60s, 80s, whatever, has been reformulated into some weaker ghost-like version of its former self. So this house, Rogue Perfumery, prides itself on having created fragrances that are a throwback to vintage perfumes. So I really wanted to give this perfumer a chance and come back and try these scents out again. So it's now about three weeks later and I have in all sincerity given all 10 of these samples a proper opportunity. I uh, very recently tried them on my skin. I tried them on paper. I tried them on clothes and gave them an opportunity to dry down, um, you know, play throughout the day, if you will, play with my skin chemistry. And I've written down some notes that I want to share with you about these. So first, let me say great appreciation for the perfumer trying to create vintage throwback um, scents that will satisfy those folks that are upset about all of the new reformulation. So if you like powerhouse fragrances that are deep, that are strong, um, that fill up a room, you might want to check out this house. So let's get to it. We're going to start with, um, we're going to start with Bon Monsieur and as I go through the reviews, I will put up a picture of the full bottle and the notes as well. All right, so by the way, the samples come in these great little bottles that have, if this matters to you, I'll just show this to you very quickly, a steel roller ball on them um, with the oil securely or perfume securely inside these little dark bottles here. Anyway, Bon Monsieur, and by the way, all of the fragrances that I'm gonna share are considered unisex. I think that all of them lean masculine and I will point out the ones that I think um, have some some femininity to them if that matters to the, the female viewers or those of you that like more female or I'm sorry feminine leaning perfumes. Anyway, Bon Monsieur is considered a woody, aromatic and spicy lavender scent and it has a notes of lavender, fir, oak moss, rose geranium, cedar lily of the valley sandalwood carnation bergamot musk and patchouli so i will say this about this bon monsieur my impressions how i would describe it is that it is a green sharp shave cream type of scent and because i really need to be honest in these reviews i want to let everyone know that this particular fragrance has what i would call 
a, a vomit note. And I, I don't mean that to put the fragrance down. I'm just being honest about what it smells like. It has a note that smells like vomit on the opening, on the opening. It does dry down um, after that, actually, and in the middle. But this ends up uh, drying down to somewhat of a shave cream kind of scent, like that barbershop sort of scent. I do think this is a highly masculine leaning scent. That's Bon Monsieur. I do get the cedar in it. I get a little bit of the bergamot and the patchouli and the oak moss. I don't know what scent in here is creating that initial unpleasant note on the opening and in the middle. This is not something that I would personally purchase, nor is it something that I would like for any guy in my life, my sons or my husband to have on in the house. I wouldn't even give this to my dad. Nope. This is a no for me. This is a pass, although I appreciate, like I said, the artistry behind each of these scents. So I just want to be very clear about that before we go on. The next scent in the lineup is Dervish. Dervish. And this is considered a musky, tobacco-y, vanilla, amber fragrance. The way that it reads to my nose is I pick up a minty and medicinal sort of a chord in here. I would say that I am picking up what I smell to be pistachio and almond together, okay? It reminds me of Imagine Girl of Now by Ellie Saab, except with some mint uh, and herb notes mixed in with it and some powderiness to it and also leaning masculine. I know that's a lot. So <laughs> if anyone has tried, and I think it's pronounced Yope, J-O-O-P, I have that one as well, the old school Yope. It smells like that a little bit. It gives me those kind of powdery vibes, but with mint and herbs mixed in. The notes in here are vanilla, tobacco leaf, labdanum, civet, leather, jasmine, I'm going to butcher this next one. I think it's olibanum, olibanum, musk, saffron or saffron, sandalwood and bergamot. I I don't dislike this one. This is one that intrigues me and and if you've watched my channel, you know that I have a deep appreciation for weird fragrances. I would call Dervish delightfully weird. Um, I don't know that I would go and purchase a bottle of this, though if someone gifted it to me, for example, I would play with it. I would certainly wear it, try it out. I could see myself enjoying this either on a very cold day, if you want that like ice queen minty vibe going on, or in the summertime, if you want to smell a little medicinal and nutty together. I don't know. I'm trying to see if I pick up the leather on it. I'm sniffing a tester in case you're wondering what I'm doing off screen. <laughs> um, I do pick up a little bit of that civet and that deep tobacco leaf. Maybe it's the tobacco leaf that is fooling my nose into thinking it's picking up that like pistachio almond kind of scent. But I would say this is like a medicinal nutty scent. I like it. In fact, I'm going to put it on the maybe list. Let me be fair to der Dervish and put it on the maybe list. I would uh, give this a six to seven on a scale of one to 10. By the way, for Rogue, even though I don't like it, I can appreciate the artistry behind the blend and I would give it maybe a five in my own personal opinion. Okay, next is one called Flora and Fauna, Flora and Fauna. Okay, this is one that I was really looking forward to sampling because I really like scents that smell like you're in, you've got your nose in like a deep earthy garden um, or in the middle of the forest. And so I was hoping for something like that. I will say that it is super duper green on opening. It has a very sharp opening. And it also has, if you stick your nose in it too deeply, it does also have that same kind of like vomit note. And I don't know what is with that. The main accords are amber, animalic, musky, powdery, citrus. And the notes are apricot, labdanum, bergamot, civet, oak moss, amber, leather, and patchouli. I wonder if it's that civet 
that is reading to my nose as a little bit of a vomit note. I did read reviews where um, the reviewers claim that the civet in here is a very sort of old school civet before it, you know, became, um, I think it's illegal. I'm not sure if it's illegal or not to use the actual animal um, extract. I don't know. Um, I like the way this smells from afar. If you like very green forest like notes, like piney notes, even. However, that little like vomit undertone scent, I, I don't care for. I would probably give this a five or six just for the green part of it because I do like that. So let's go on. The next one is called Champs Lunaire, Champs Lunaire, or Cham, I don't think you say the S, Champ Lunaire. Those of you that speak French and are watching, please let me know if I have butchered that. I do not want to offend my Francophone friends, <laughs> but, but I don't uh, know how to pronounce it all. I did look it up though. This is a tuberose white floral coconut scent with, um, in, in the notes, it's tuberose, coconut milk, sandalwood, pomelo, white rose, and musk. This also has a fresh medicinal, slightly like licorice opening to me. And as it dries down, it shows up soapy and woody in my opinion. Um, trying to remember, is this one that, here we go. So I do get that tuberose note mixing a little bit with that coconut. The tuberose is prominent in here. Maybe the tuberose and the rose come up uh, the most out of the scents. I mean, the notes in this rather. I don't dislike this. However, I wouldn't go out of my way to purchase it. It's not one that I find like offensive at all. Um, I could see this working for people. And if you like tuberose and if you like the variety of tuberose scents, the different ways that it can show up and play on your skin, you might like this. One other thing I really wanted to say about all of these fragrances, I even wrote it down because I didn't want to forget this. And it is, these perform very, very differently on paper, like a blotter, on clothing than they do on your skin. You do have to try these out and give them an opportunity to mix with your natural oils, your whatever else comes out of your skin <laughs> and settle down. Because I found that what I'm smelling on the paper was very different than how things were mixing on my skin. For example, on the paper, I don't pick up the soapiness or the woodiness in this Champ Lunaire, but I do on uh, my skin. Okay, so I would give this a good six, maybe seven, if you're into that kind of fragrance. I don't know that it's for me, but I appreciate it. Um, and you know, I can give it, I can give it its props. I can give the the perfumer props for for the attempt there and what he was going for. The next one is Shipra Siam or Siam Shipra Siam. This one is mossy. It's citrus. It's woody. It's animalic and it's spicy. The scents here at the top are kaffir lime and basil, middle notes of jasmine, alang alang, base notes of oak mot, oak mot, <laughs> oak moss, civet, benzoin, spices, leather, and sandalwood. This reminds me of a dry like foresty kind of scent. And that's really all I get. I do also get that same sort of, you know, like that, I hate to keep saying it because I even hate the word vomit. It's such a gross word. Just saying it out loud makes me want to do the thing. Um, maybe it is the civet or the kind of civet that this perfumer uses in these perfumes that's reading to my nose that way. But it is a drier scent and does remind me of greenery out in in nature okay all right we're gonna go on to the other five five fragrances at this point okay so next up is tuberose and moss and this is the one that really got me intrigued so i am in a number of fragrance groups on facebook and a few people posted about this tuberose and moss and they were raving and raving about it 
uh, and how wonderful it was. So of course, Veronica wanted to get her nose on it. The way that this opens is like hairspray. So that's all I get. That's sort of like really pleasant, nice, you know, chemical scent that you get from a hairspray that's clean and fresh. And then as it starts to dry down, it um, sweetens up. It sweetens up, it opens up, although I will say it stays green. And then it has a super duper dry down that is pleasant and soft when it's really all the way dry, dried down really sweet and soft. Um, I have a number of tuberose fragrances. I like tuberose. I'm on a tuberose kick. I've been on a tuberose kick for probably the past 20 years of my life. <laughs> I really enjoy tuberose scents. Uh, and I like moss. I don't, I don't know that I would go out of my way to purchase this, although I do like it. I would give this maybe a five or a six. Um, and this, so this is considered a white floral. It's musky and mossy uh, and animalic. And the notes are tuberose, oak moss, musk, vanilla, whipped cream, labdanum, cedar, and pepper. I think I pick up a lot of the pepper. That's clear to me. I do get the tuberose. I get the oak moss and I get the cedar in this. I don't get any whipped cream, which would have been nice to give it a sort of roundness, a fluffiness, and sort of elevate it a bit, but I don't get that in here. So that's tuberose and moss. Next up is mousse illuminé. Illuminé, I believe is how you say that. And this one, <laughs> we're gonna spend a minute talking about this one. Okay, this smells like a mixture of salt and vinegar chips with armpits of someone who has had a lot of onions mixed with hamburger meat and pencil shavings. Chips, armpits, hamburgers, and pencil shavings. And I don't mean that in a good way. <laughs> and here is what I really dislike about this. I, you know, kept this on my skin, kept giving this a try. And those, that mixture of, I don't even know what category of scents those are in, and except that it's a, a stinky mixture. It really intensified on the dry down for me. So this one became a, stead, a steadfast no, a real quick, I don't think so. I don't want to smell like this. I don't wanna know anyone that smells like this. This is not pleasant to me at all. So that's Mousse uh, Illumini, not Illuminaire, did I say that? Mousse Illumini. Um, okay, let's keep going on. I don't wanna say you know more about that. Out of respect for the perfumer. So then we have Jasmine Antique, which I was really looking forward to trying. I do enjoy a strong Jasmine note. I love Alien, for example, that has that dirty jasmine uh, mixed with that amber. This one is the most interesting of the bunch, and I want to explain why. This opens like a cough drop, a, a medicinal cough drop mixed with um, the solid air fresheners, you know, the ones that come in those plastic containers that have like the vented front. And then they, as you know, the days go by, they whittle down in size. Those uh, mixed with cough drop to me is how this opens up. As it dries down, I get a strong Band-Aid scent, like fresh Band-Aids out of the box. And then as it continues to dry down further, I get this heavy menthol and cigarette smoke scent, like this ashtray scent. And it's intense for me and it's suffocating. I literally had a hard time putting my nose to this the, the more that it dried down because I felt like I was sticking my nose in a direct ashtray. Now, I will say some people do like that kind of scent. And so if that's your, your jam, you may wanna try out this Jasmine Antique. And I mean that sincerely. The main accords are musky, powdery, and white floral, and the notes are just jasmine, musk, cloves, and vanilla. 
I pick up the strong cigarette smoke ashtray smell, the further that it has an opportunity to settle. This is not one that I would purchase, although I will say that that whole like um, evolution of the scent, the way that it morphed over time from that medicinal kind of opening to the Band-Aid to the cigarette smoke intrigued me. Maybe not in a good way, but it did intrigue me. And if you like that, maybe this is the one you've been waiting for. I would give this on my personal scale, like what I like, one to 10, I would give this like a three. This is one that on my skin did not perform very well um, at all in terms of me liking it, To just, just to be be clear about that, in terms of me liking it. All right, so we've got two left. I'm gonna move on to... Fougère Lobe, Fougère Lobe. This is considered a fresh, spicy, aromatic, green, mossy scent with some lavender. And this one is definitely very much, um, yeah, it comes across very green and spicy, um, almost to a fault for me in that it's very masculine leaning. The notes here are geranium, oak moss, lavender, citrus notes, galbanum, hay, musk, Moroccan rose, sandalwood, costas, I think is how you say that, camphor and amber. And I think that that camphor and that oak moss and that lavender and that citrus, maybe with that hay or what come forward the most, this is very barbershop like to me. It smells like all of those sort of shave creams and hair gels and, and things that mix together in that barbershop to give you that, that fresh, um, um, that fresh, I don't know, like that shave cream smell. It's hard to, to describe it other than that that green mossy scent. I, I personally find this a little bit on the flat and dull side, but it's not unpleasant. If you like that barbershop scent, if you like heavy green scents, this might be one for you. For me, in terms of my personal enjoyability, I would give this a four out of 10, um, but I could see other people that like that barbershop kind of you know, vibe to really enjoy this and maybe put it up in the seven to eight range. So then let's go to the one that actually appealed to me the most out of the group. And that is Tabak Vert, Tabak Vert. So this is a mossy, woody, tobacco, spicy smell um, with some, some florals as well. And I really did enjoy this. I would give this a seven or an eight. And of the ones that I tried, this would probably be the one that I would uh, think about purchasing first. On the opening, I get a very green set of notes. I also get this sort of sharp like rhubarb opening. You know how with rhubarb as a note in fragrances, if it's in the opening, it tends to be you know sharp, fruity but sharp, um, and then it dries down a little bit nicer. But I also get some pistachio in the opening, even though that's not a note in here. So maybe it's like the tobacco and the oak moss mis mixing together that's giving me that pistachio kind of vibe. This mellows out on my skin into something pretty luscious uh, and green. I think it's the most complex of all of the scents. I find it pleasant. I find it one that I would enjoy wearing, I think. It reminds me slightly, slightly of Calyx by Prescriptives. I think Clinique is all is making Calyx now. I, I'm not sure about the switch and how that happened, but Calyx, I mean, a prescriptives used to make Calyx back in the day, the green bottle. That scent is what this reminds me of. And I do like it. I don't pick up a whole bunch of the tobacco. It's sort of like an undertone in here rather than a prominent note. So I would give this a seven or an eight. So that's my review of Rogue Perfumery uh, by Manuel Cross. Like I said, I can absolutely appreciate where he was going with this. And I know that there are some loyal diehard fans of this out there. If you like a heavy vintage scent, if you like that, that really uh, prominent civet note, you might want to check some of these out. The bottles are gorgeous. I really love the sort of art deco design on the labels that might not be for everyone, but I appreciate it. Um, and I think we should probably think about supporting more indie houses like this. Um, 
but you just got to find that one that you like. So for me, it's probably going to be a tobacco vert or maybe even that dervish dervish. Uh, so that's my review. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe and come join us again. And if you're a returning subscriber, thanks so much. I appreciate your, your support and you're joining us to talk about, I say us, it's just me, you guys. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.